Hey everyone, so here's a build uh, breakdown video on uh, my latest build, which is Arcane and Dex, and centered around trying to make the Obsidian Lamina viable in some way. So, um, the Obsidian Lamina definitely needs a couple of buffs. I'm, not, I'm just going to be up front from, right from the beginning. The Ash of War uh, animation is far too slow. So, like, the recovery here before you can do a roll is way too long. Uh, also, the time it takes for you to dodge and then start attacks, and then also the time between attacks is still way too long. You can actually lose if people just keep swinging. Even if you land your hit, and like if you successfully bait them into a dodge and then to a counter hit, they can just keep swinging and knock you out <laughs> of your animation. So that needs to be fixed. But uh, all the same, it does a crazy amount of damage. So um, it's definitely, uh, if it gets a, a couple of tweaks, it could be a really fun build playstyle. Uh, something else to note too that you might want to master if you can do this build is unlocking and then if you want to lunge towards them with a the dodge, look the other way and then press R2 and look back towards them. That'll start the attack uh, at them and I would advise against hard locking just because uh, it does have some tracking issues as well. So uh, you do it this way, then you start towards them, and at the very last hit, you can decide if you want to go towards them by looking backwards again, or if you are, which you will likely a lot of times be close to out of stamina, if you want to back up and uh, regain spacing, um, then just uh, stay looking towards them after you've, like, just don't do anything, just let the animation finish. So it looked like this if I want to go towards them both times. So yeah, I can finish the attack and then quickly reverse around. Uh, but more often than not, you'll want to regain space. So you just stay holding forward and then put yourself back up. That animation's too long as well. Okay, but let's look at the build now and see uh, everything that I have on here. Uh, before anyone asks, Furious ba uh, Blade of Ansbach is bugged, doesn't have any bleed buildup. And so as of now, there isn't really a reason to invest in it. And this build is very hungry for stats as is. Uh, for that reason, we don't actually go up to 19 faith. You could boost this build up all, as high as level 166 and, and put some points into vigor and faith to get uh, that spell up and then spend the extra points while still being able to invade at level 150 uh, if you'd like, uh, because the, the formula for um, what level you can invade at is basically like 90% your level is the low, the low end. It really uh, was a hard decision, but I think that going up to 50 Vigor instead of 60 or even 55 was really needed just so we could get enough endurance when combined with the Erd Tree's favor too to get uh, light rolling while still having the Reduvia. The Reduvia really, I did, in my last clips I didn't have it. I have some new clips that I'll be adding at the end of this video, but this thing gives you a really good option for lots of bleed and damage buildup. Um, without it basically forces them to pressure you, which was the problem that the uh, scythe has on its own, which is that it's a really good counter-attacking weapon, but it doesn't really have a great way to force people to attack you, and so they can really set up situations where they're like you're surrounded and uh, uh, they're, they they can just play it really slow. But the Reduvia can melt people with the Ash of War, and it also benefits from the Unspot clothing, so it worked out really well. Uh, the reason we're using these these clothing pieces here is because these Unspock attire uh, sets give you a 3% benefit to dynastic skills, which includes the Obsidian Lamina's damage, the Reduvia. Uh, you could also use the uh, Thrusting Sword. Uh, the headpiece, I just wanted to keep the aesthetic of the build, and so I swapped it off of Ons box. But you could, if you want another 4%, go with the Wise Man if you just want to uh, keep it... Um, keep it more uh like optimized the only thing is you're not gonna have light rolling then so you may have to tweak around with some of the other stats in the build but uh i wanted to keep this aesthetic going for the grim reaper style uh so reduvia is our like primary like opening weapon and just keeps the forces the uh, nature of the fight to be they have to pressure us. The Obsidian Lamina, you typically want to have already weakened them a little bit before you go for the Ash of War, just as a heads up, because you really want to finish them off if you're going to commit to using this. Um, another thing, too, that I would advise is dodge more than one. Don't always follow up the R2, especially at the beginning. Try to get them conditioned and used to you always dodging. Um, and then uh, light roll again. Another reason we like light rolling is because of the animation issues with this weapon. It really helps us regain a lot of space quickly, and uh, it helps us bail out of a lot of attacks that would otherwise kill us when running such a light defense build. In terms of incantations, uh, typically I just have Blood Flame Talon, Blood Boon, Swarm of Flies, Flame Grant Me Strength. Uh, you don't need Fire Serp Serpent, and then Bestial Vitality as well if my Wonders Physic runs out. Uh, so we have a really um, 
specific tech here. So we're going to be running stamina recovery because this weapon has also stamina issues. Like it's very greedy for stamina. Probably needs a, a buff in that regard. But um, the Crimson Burst Crystal tier is actually to prevent people from being able to turn off our Ritual Sword Talisman. Um, because uh, a lot of times people will just fan dagger chip you and just pop the uh, the talisman that way. Just get... But if we have uh, passive health regen on, especially this much, it's it's basically very unreliable to chip off our health. They have to earn a solid hit in order to prevent our uh, ritual sword talisman from going on. If you are if you're having trouble with the build and or if you're fighting bosses, I would substitute the Lord of Blood's exaltation for uh, the ritual shield talisman just for some more defense. But uh, if you want to go full offense in PvP, I was really trying to make it so that almost every well I tried to make every talisman boost the Ash of War. Two-handing talisman does not boost the Ash of War. I should be uh, making a point to mention and that's just because your um ar is actually what decides the damage of the weapon not uh, not any passive benefits that happen like when thrusting or when two-handing etc all those ones don't uh, carry over if i had i had the extra spot i could have also put on the crusade insignia but i really think having the um Urtree's favor and having the reduvia is, and, and while keeping the light rolling is an essential um, piece of the puzzle to this build. Once I put this on, it really was a game changer. Could just be because the Reduvia is so strong. But uh, yeah, either way, the most I could get away with was three. If you like, you could swap uh, the Ritual Sword Talisman off for the Crusade Insignia and then change the Wondrous Physic if you like. There isn't a lot of really high benefit uh, tiers, though. We're really fragile, and uh, you could put the uh, blood sucking tier on for more damage um it's pretty high risk high reward not gonna lie but then again i guess the build is so your call uh in terms of gear fan daggers for popping bubbles and then you have a lot of albaneric pots but one really fun thing with this build is that it plays like a little bit slower and careful but once you hit somebody you hit them hard and having the ability to lock them in at that low health is uh set and it also is very lower appropriate with this build because it's like a you're basically getting marked for death when you get hit by this pox you're not gonna be able to heal uh and then the chase down is quite easy uh with the reduvia or the scythe on either hand yeah you've got a lot of options yeah so uh just going over the stats really quick again so 50 vigor uh we needed to lower it five points even further but we were running the god recruit when we we're playing on um on single player so you'll get uh, five of that back uh, that'll also boost your mind and your endurance giving you more stamina the strength is fine i mean it helps you a little bit i guess with the scythe scaling but uh, well, our decks will get boosted because technically we would be getting decent return on stats all the way up to 80 we just don't have enough stats to pump that high uh, when we've got arcane at 40 and the reason we do that is so that our uh, our scaling on our communion seal is still pretty decent the communion seal has interesting soft caps so um, 40 and 45 for, I believe it's physical damage and, or sorry, for incant damage versus uh, our uh, physical damage scaling on weapons. Those two soft caps can be reached. If we use the Godricrune, we get all the way up to 45. So, um, yeah, the, again, the Godricrune is really putting in a lot of work here if we use it. And uh, it's it makes the single player aspect really, uh, really enjoyable. But for PvP, the most we can squeeze out is 60, 40 in dexterity arcane faith we do have fifth we did put one point in there just so that we can activate uh flame grant me strength that will boost your ar and your staff um but uh it is it's a i've found it kind of like diminishing returns on this build just because you play so slow instead of aggressive that it's hard to make use of buffs that don't last very long um the one exception here the lord of blood's exaltation is just so easy to proc with the uh, Reduvia and it's our playstyle anyway, so that's the only reason that that one I kind of made an exception for. But uh, I, I haven't really been finding that I use Flame Grant Me Strength all that much, just because it's never, it's almost never worth the time unless I'm getting the jump on them from behind. If you do want to uh, do what I do a lot of time, which is give up a talisman slot just for the fashion and just to show off the aesthetic when you're doing invasions, uh, give up the Lord of Blood's Exaltation just because uh, when you've bled somebody, usually you've already done so much damage you don't need the benefits so much anymore. Uh, and the Ritual Sword Talisman will give you about 10%. So it, it's more than enough to usually get the job done. So I would give up that talisman if I had to choose. 
So uh, if you do want to push past level 150 and you don't mind going into higher levels for invasions, there is a lot of room to improve the build. Uh, we still need, most importantly, our Vigor. So uh, the next 10 stat points, I would say, going into Vigor would be pretty, uh, pretty clear. After that, you've got a lot of room in Dexterity. Uh, you could go all the way up to 80, so that right off the bat, that alone would put like just vigor, and that would give us up to 180. Um, if you want to push it up to 200, then boosting five more points into arcane, and then um, I think at the last five, yeah, another five points into uh, dexterity, getting as close to that 80 as possible would be the optimal way to go ahead and boost this build. Next, uh, this build definitely is better at 1v1s rather than invasions, but uh, a general principle that you're trying to do with this build is to get both of you guys to fairly low stamina, like try to let them take the offense and uh, you're focusing more on evading and just getting in chip damage. Um, let them dump their combos, like especially like people who just swing colossal weapons way too much uh just start dodging around them let them burn a lot of their stamina and then start the, the dodge the last attack with the l2 and then start the uh, big chain because taking away their ability to roll out or continue swinging uh opens them up to a massive punish so uh yeah that's your general idea so try to play where there's a stamina war now you paradoxically spend a lot of stamina doing that big attack at the end so you typically only want to commit to it once you've set up uh, a situation where they've dumped a lot of their stamina if not all of it and uh, don't have too much left to uh, try to evade you uh, also don't hesitate to throw your alban eric pot before you commit to the big combo um, it can be hard to get it off after that long animation so if sometimes it might even be worth it just to throw it earlier it's a decent amount of time you get like 30 seconds with it so uh throw it out uh and then try to set up the combo and then chase them down while they're still waiting for that animation or that uh pot to run out
fuck? How did my scythe not hit him there? 